Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video where today we'll be looking at Flat Earther's latest obsession that they think disproves the Earth being a globe, which is aircraft pitch data. Aircraft pitch refers to the angle of the aircraft relative to its local horizontal running along the length of the aircraft. So if its nose is pointing below the aircraft's horizontal, then it's pitching down. Conversely, it's pitching up when the nose is pointing above its horizontal, and when its nose is pointing along the horizontal, it has zero pitch. You also then have roll and yaw. Roll being the angle relative to the horizontal running across the width of the aircraft, and yaw being the horizontal pivot of the aircraft. Now, a pilot can get a pretty good idea of the pitch and roll of their aircraft just by looking out of the window at the horizon of the Earth. However, if they're in thick cloud or flying at night, then their view of the horizon could be obscured. So then, without that reference to work with, they're basically left relying on their other senses to tell them what the aircraft is doing, and this can often lead to disorientation. So a pilot can then rely on the aircraft's instruments to tell them what the aircraft is doing. And to see what the pitch of the aircraft is, they look at something called an attitude indicator, also known as an artificial horizon, which, as the name implies, creates an artificial horizon in order to show the pitch and roll of the aircraft, even if the pilot physically can't see the horizon. Now, in modern aircraft with onboard computers, they create logs of all aspects of an aircraft over time during the flight, such as the aircraft's altitude, heading, speed, pitch, roll, yaw, air pressure, and even air temperatures. Every single piece of data about the flight can be stored, just like how every single piece of data about you can be stored, even in places that you don't want it to be. Although, you can change that thanks to Incogni. In today's online world, so much of our personal data gets harvested and stored by data brokers. Data such as not only your name, address, date of birth, but even information about your finances, health, and family. These brokers then sell that data to the likes of marketing and financial companies. This can lead to you getting more spam, as well as the increased risk that your information will then be leaked in data breaches, resulting potentially in identity theft. Now, you can contact these brokers and request that they remove your details, but this means finding all of the brokers and contacting them individually, which takes a lot of time. And even after they remove it, there's nothing to then stop them from reacquiring it. This is where Incogni can greatly help. They automatically find which brokers have your data and not only chase them to remove it, but they also recheck each broker every 90 days to ensure they've not reacquired your data. And the process is so simple. With just my name and email address, Incogni instantly found 49 brokers that were holding my data, and within minutes, 16 of them had already confirmed removal. Take back control of your data today with Incogni. Use my code DAVEMK at checkout to get 60% off their annual plans, and all with the peace of mind of a full 30-day money-back guarantee. So why do flat earthers think that aircraft pitch data disproves the globe? Well, there seems to be two potential trains of thought. The first comes down to how you read aircraft data charts, because they're line graphs plotted over time. So an aircraft during level flight keeps a constant pitch, which on a line graph over time creates a straight line because the pitch angle isn't changing. Wolfie 6020, who is a pilot by profession, recently did a video with Will Duffy where he went over the topic of pitch data and highlighted that the pitch angle is always recorded by the aircraft. So it's taken from the reference of the aircraft measuring the angle to the aircraft's local horizontal. And as the aircraft travels around the globe, its horizontal is constantly changing to keep it perpendicular to the ground. If you have a direction of down, you have 90 degrees to that, that's horizontal. So that's how aircraft instruments define horizontal, by knowing the direction of down and going 90 degrees to that. That's horizontal. So when we talk about pitch attitude, and we'll come back to that later, um, the horizontal that they're referring to 
is 90 degrees to down, and that direction of down changes around the Earth. To demonstrate this, I put together this little setup where I had my camera fitted with a periscope lens circling around my model globe. This replicates the look from an object as it circles around the globe. Obviously, in reality, a plane would be much closer to the surface, but I physically can't get the lens close enough to truly replicate the view from a plane. This is more like the view from a plane if it were 500 miles in altitude, but the principle remains the same. Now, if you were to plot the motion of the camera from an outside perspective relative to the rest of the room, then the camera is going around in a circle, but from the perspective of the camera, measuring relative to the globe, the pitch of the camera isn't changing. The camera's horizontal will always be right across the center line of the image. And aside from small movements where the balance of the rig is shifting around, the horizon stays in the same part of the frame throughout, meaning the angle between the horizontal and the horizon stays consistent. And plotted over time, this would show no change in pitch. Now this is what Wolfie was explaining in the video with Will, but some flat earthers have been trying to pull that argument apart by going after how they think artificial horizons work to figure out where horizontal is. If you claim to have an up and down and you're sitting on the runway, you've got your gyros running, you've got your, your HEG set, you've got your horizontal set now. When you take off of that runway, you automatically have to have another horizontal if you're on a globe. Every centimeter you move would be a new horizontal. So your pitch data will show you following a physical curve. The pitch and roll indicators use gyros, and a trait of a gyro is that the momentum of the gyro spinning keeps the gyro pointing in that particular direction. I.e., if you mount a spinning gyro disc inside a frame that allows for free movement, you can move that frame around as you please, but the gyro disc will always stay in the same orientation, a principle known as rigidity in space. So put that concept into a plane, if you lay a gyro level in a plane on the ground and then spin it up, the plane can change its pitch angle all it wants, but the gyro naturally will try and remain pointing in the same direction. So then measuring the difference between where the disc was relative to the aircraft compared to where it now is, can allow you to see how the attitude of the plane has changed. But what flat earthers argue is, if you spin a gyro up inside a plane when you're at a particular location on a globe, at that particular moment, the gyro will be level with the plane's horizontal, but the moment the plane begins traveling around the globe, the gyro should then stay pointing in the same initial direction whilst the plane's local horizontal is changing, and thus we should then start to see a discrepancy in the recorded pitch data. They don't know how gyros work, I think. That's really the big question. It stays see, rigid claim, in space. His, yeah, but his claim is the gyro auto corrects itself for gravity. And that's why it gives a reference of horizontal, which is him just making a claim. It's just a claim that that's happening. That's not, no, that's that's false. The horiz the, the gyro it's already set, it's made its reference. And its reference is based on a three-dimensional spatial space. So once you're going and you're flying, it knows up and down, it knows left from right. However, their claims suffer from a fundamental flaw. Aircraft gyros don't work like that. It's true that a typical basic gyro, when spun up, would hold a rigid direction in space, and as it traveled around the globe, its apparent pitch relative to the earth would change but flat earthers are taking this as though they've just worked out some huge gotcha moment against the globe as though none of the aviators or aircraft manufacturers for the past several decades didn't think to question how would a gyro account for the curvature of earth in reality this problem with gyros has long been recognized and accounted for for example here is a U.S. Air Force training video about aircraft gyros from the 1960s, which highlights the problem. 
and rigidity in space. All of its practical applications are based on these two properties. As for rigidity in space, the spinning rotor remains in its original attitude, while the gimbal and base move around it. In other words, the gyro maintains its axis in relation to space and not to the surface of the Earth. If a gyro moves around the Earth, its axis is vertical to the Earth's surface here, at an angle here, and horizontal here. So this drift has long been known about. Now, the first artificial horizon was created in the late 1920s by aviator Lawrence Sperry, who is incidentally also accredited with inventing the first autopilot system. And here is an article from March 1945 detailing the workings of the Sperry Attitude Gyro and specifically highlights the presence of what is called an erection magnet, which is located on the underside of the gyro. And the article explains how this magnet will gradually return the gyro to vertical, reading, quote, Since a gyro maintains a fixed attitude in space, it appears to drift relative to the Earth. It is therefore to overcome the effect of these three factors that the erection system is incorporated, its function being to maintain the gyro axis vertical in order to establish a fiducial flight reference. End quote. And gyro erecting systems are what are used in all aircraft attitude indicators to correct for this problem going around a globe although there are seemingly different ways that it can be implemented. Along with gyros having a trait of holding rigid in space, they also have another trait called gyroscopic precession, which is if a torque force is applied to a spinning gyro, the gyro will change direction. But this precession will occur in a direction that is 90 degrees away from the direction that the force was applied to it. The gyro will resist any force that attempts to change its plane of rotation. This leads to the principle of precession. When a downward force is applied here, the gyro moves, but not in the direction of the applied force. Instead, it moves at right angles to the applied force. The gyro maintains its attitude while the earth turns under it. Every six hours, the gyro drifts through 90 degrees in relation to the Earth's surface. In order for the gyro instrument to be dependable, drift must be corrected continuously. There are several types of erection systems that correct for drift. The principle back of all these systems is based on three steps. The direction and degree of drift are measured by electrical or mechanical sensing elements. These elements then control the application of a proper force to the gyro, and it precesses back to its normal attitude. So gyros often use a system called pendulous vanes, where air is blown down the inside of the rotor and exits through slots around the bottom. These slots are covered by metal frames. The gyro will naturally hold rigid in space, but the frame pieces around it are free to move, so they will naturally hang vertical due to gravity. So when the gyro is vertical, all the exits are equally covered in all directions, but when the gyro tilts, it opens up one of the holes and covers the other, which then causes more air to escape from one side. This causes a force to be applied to the gyro and will push it back towards vertical. Alternatively, you can get mercury erected gyros that use a small container of mercury. When the gyros tilt off a of vertical, gravity will still cause the mercury to sit level to the aircraft's local horizontal, but if the container isn't level, then the mercury will eventually touch one of several switches inside the container. This switch will trigger a reaction from a torque motor that is attached to the gyro to gradually pull the gyro back to vertical. Aircraft typically change attitude at a rate of a few degrees per second. 
a plane traveling around the globe at 500 miles an hour experiences 0.002 degrees of Earth curve each second. So you're looking at a hundred times difference between the rates of change of a gyro going around a globe versus a plane in typical flight. So these methods of gradually moving a gyro back to vertical are too small to impact a gyro for typical aircraft movements, but it's more than enough to keep the gyro moving to a local vertical as a plane travels around the globe. So with it always slowly moving back to vertical at a faster rate than the plane is moving around the curvature of a globe, then it is always referencing the vertical from the plane's location rather than from the gyro's starting position. So its pitch angle will always be in respect to the horizontal of the aircraft, not the horizontal of where the gyro was started up. In reality, if the Earth were flat, then no such features would be needed in an aircraft gyro because all verticals would be parallel, so the gyro would naturally remain in the same plane relative to Earth. The very nature of a gyro's rigidity in space would be enough for an artificial horizon on a flat Earth. The only reason aircraft gyros have erecting systems in them is precisely because the Earth isn't flat. And I think that's going to conclude this video. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.